Assalamu alaikum. You're watching Changing Times and I am Dr. Zubair Khari. Pakistan and Afghan relations have always been the recurrent theme of this program and we have been trying to advocate the peace efforts that, that are underway that may be talked about or that are the potential areas that are needs to be uh, explored in many different ways. So we are very fortunate that uh, today uh, an Afghan delegation is in Islamabad and they are part of a peace process that is going on, you may call it 1.5 peace process or second tier peace process. So we have some uh, delegates with us and the particular theme of this conference that is going on in Islamabad is about the migration crisis kind of a situation or a humanitarian issue that has been raised by the Afghan migrant that are living inside Pakistan for some four decades now. Some of them have gone back, some of them have gelled into the Pakistani society and, and some of them are still living in the camp. So how to cope with this bigger issue of the migrants, although it's one of the leading issues uh, of the world, particularly after the Middle Eastern crisis. But when we talk about Pak Afghan relation, these migrants are one of the major areas of concern. And uh, we have also been discussing some other issues that are related to uh, the Pakistan-Afghan relation. There has been some distrust, there have been some allegations uh, hurling across the east side, and there have been some distrust related to the future of Afghanistan and as far as the Taliban are concerned. So we'll be largely discussing on the, on the migrants, and then we may be touching on other issues as well. And I have a very august company in my house today. Let me introduce you to uh, Senator Afrasi Ab Khatak Saab. He's a very well-known in Pakistani politics and in expert on Park of Khan relations. Khatak Saab, thank you very much for thank joining you. us. And then we have Mr. Nasir Ahmed Hadar Zai. He is a social and migration activist, and he works on these issues quite a lot. Mr. Hadar Zai, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. And we are also joined by Mr. Muhammad Musa Mahmoudi. He is a human rights activist, and he has a cr critical role to play as far as the Afghan migrants are concerned. Thank you very much, sir, for joining our show. Khatak Saab, uh, if I may join with you, uh, we have been talking about in this program, you have been uh, very kind enough to come to my show. But this time, a particular focus on uh, this, uh, uh, the migrants, Afghan migrants in Pakistan. Why, why so? Why we are not talking about other issues? I think uh, uh, this time we decided to focus uh, on a very important issue because uh, as you know, I mean, this uh, conflict unfortunately in Afghanistan and around Afghanistan has continued for almost four decades mm -hmm. and it has created humanitarian crisis. Yeah. You see the displacement of people started in 1980s when there was war against Soviet forces in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, uh, there was no stable solution, so this pro crisis persisted. Mm -hmm. so, and, and then the international fatigue set in, and there were other crises okay. in Middle East and other places. Yeah. So uh, focus was diverted from yeah. this. People are no more talking about the Afghan they, They're not. Yeah. So, but, but, but the problem is there. Yeah. Even if they're not talking about it, the problem has not gone away. Mm -hmm. So we thought, let's refocus on it. Yeah. And let's uh, ask the governments, both governments uh, in Afghanistan and in Pakistan, and also UNHCR, mm -hmm. which is dealing with this uh, problem. So we, we, we try to uh, identify the gaps, mm -hmm. identify the uh, deficiencies, mm -hmm. and also uh, we came out with suggestions. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it, it's going to uh, play an important role in uh, helping both the governments and also the UN. So the Pakistan of Afghan relations, you are looking through the prism of humanitarian issues. You see, it may not be a political issue. You see, this RPI, uh, Regional Peace Institute and uh, Strategic Studies Center in Afghanistan, yeah. they have been uh, continuing this dialogue for the last few years. Okay. So we have discussed uh, economic aspects also, security aspects in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, this time, we were, uh, of course, discussing migration, uh, refugees. But it can't be isolated from other aspects mm, yeah. because this is product of war, conflict. Yeah, yeah. So that is the root cause. Mm. Uh, so naturally, we couldn't avoid it. So mm. in the last session, we talked about uh, the uh, strategic uh, questions of security yeah. and uh, peace. And but so all these are inter interlinked. Okay, let me go to uh, Hadar Zaysab. Hadar Zaysab, we in Pakistan uh, take the Afghan migrants in many different perspectives. Uh, when the Afghan uh, war was going on, when the Russian invasion was there, they were taking it as a uh, different perspective, and now people are taking it in a very different outlook altogether. How do you see these immig uh, immigrants or migrants living inside Pakistan from the Afghan perspective? Well, thank you very much um, uh, for inviting us for today, uh, today's program. Um, echoing on what uh, Mr. Khatak Saab mentioned, uh -huh. historically, it, it really is um, uh, referring back to the years that uh, uh, 
Afghan mass migration happened into the Pakistani territory uh, during the Soviet invasion. Mm -hmm. And we do have a history on this uh, over at least three and a half or four decades. Yeah. Uh, and uh, one thing that, is, that needs to be really communicated to the Pakistani nation and to the Pakistani authorities is that the Afghan people uh, in, in general really appreciated the assistance um, that, have been ex that had been extended to the, Pakist uh, to the Afghan uh, migrants who migrated to, who had to migrate to yeah. Pakistan they had over no those choice, years. Exactly, exactly. Uh, but then now the situation has uh, somewhat uh, changed. Uh, now we do have a government uh, where, uh, uh, if you can recall uh, 2003 mm -hmm. and 2004, we did have a huge uh, um, influx of returning migrants from mm -hmm. Pakistan to Afghanistan. Uh, we uh, almost have a record of three to four million Afghans voluntarily returning back to Afghanistan. Okay. Okay. But unfortunately, over time, um, uh, security situation deteriorated and uh, we did have um, anti-government elements still mm -hmm. operative mm -hmm. in different parts of the country and actually um, uh, dissolved the hope that people had uh, uh, recently created and people <coughs> decided to leave and this has continued for almost up to now uh, even 10 more years mm -hmm. um, now the discussion is that the Afghan go government uh, as far as I understand and uh, uh, various other stakeholders who are uh, practically engaged with the issues of migration do have an intention mm -hmm. a political will uh, in, uh, in, in trying to manage this crisis this is a humanitarian crisis which really impacts uh, other factors, social factors, that yeah. security is also something that we can never uh, mm. uh, ignore. So in order to, um, to kind of link this with security and maintaining peace, uh, not only in Afghanistan, but also uh, uh, we, we, uh, we did witness that it had its reflections on Pakistani territory and affecting uh, devastatedly uh, the people of Pakistan. Uh, we did do have. We do, do, do we agree on the number? Uh, as far as I know, there are more than three million uh, Afghan migrants still living in Pakistan, or do we have a different number? Yes, uh, 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 the estimated number uh, suggests that we have uh, almost uh, 1.5 million uh, registered Afghans. Okay. I mean, the the migrants in general will have to be defined, mm -hmm. and they are split into two main groups. One. Uh, those who hold POR cards, mm -hmm. proof of registration under the auspices of uh, UNHCR, United Nations High Commission for Refugees. Uh, but then there's, a, a, there's another uh, a group uh, that is uh, uh, undocumented Afghan mm -hmm. migrants uh, who also um, had at times contributions to the economy of this country. Uh, we do have cross-border uh, uh, um, uh, in and outs of Afghan migrants to Pakistan and from okay. Pakistan. So generally this number is estimated to be something uh, around 1.5 uh, four million, so but yet million to be still years. yes. Yeah. So totally um, uh, around three million, okay. but yet we have we have had this intention to kind <laughs> of pursue mm. both governments to practically engage in practices mm. where these undocumented Afghans are uh, registered mm. and verified, mm. uh, so that uh, other concerns of the Pakistani side, which also relates to security yeah. issues and also informed policy decisions. Yeah. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, it will um, also be something um, that the human rights of uh, my colleague, um, uh, who is a human rights activist, may elaborate on that. But that's really important from the national and international perspective to maintain and um, adhere to the human rights of uh, migrants. Okay, that let, is me, let me just go to uh, Mahmoudi Saab on this issue, with this very particular issue that you point out. It's a human rights issue. and There has been human rights uh, issues all over the world that we can talk about at length. But h how, how do you relate this, uh, this issue of migrants into Pakistan as a humanitarian issue? Well, thank you because very much. Because they are settled in Pakistan, <coughs> because they are living a good life maybe, they are doing businesses, they have extended families there. Well, thank you very much. First, uh, we should uh, attend to this fact that uh, refugees and migrants, they have not chosen to, you know, be refugees or migrants. Mm -hmm. uh, they were forced uh, to leave their, you know, inhabitants and uh, come across, you know, leaving everything behind. Mm -hmm. So that makes them vulnerable. Okay. Um, when there is a vulnerability, then they are entitled to have protection, both mm -hmm. international protections and national protection. And we had discussions over these issues that how these protections uh, could be provided to the refugees who mm -hmm. are living here uh, 
in Pakistan. Mm. Uh, there were discussions that, uh, as far as we are understanding, Pakistan is not a signatory to the 1951 convention and not the protocol, and, but they are abiding by the spirit of this protocol. Nonetheless, because Pakistan is party to many international human rights instruments, yeah. they have an obligation that they have to protect and respect human rights of Afghan refugees who are living in Pakistan. There were some concerns over the <coughs> arbitrary arrest of Afghans because there are you know, issue of national security or issues mm -hmm. related to that issue, extortion, uh, elements of corruption that you know, uh, uh, give authority uh, mm -hmm. uh, to police that uh, treat Afghans uh, outside of the rule of law of Pakistan and Thank that you. leave also uh, refugees in, uh, in a difficult uh, situation. So these were the matter of issues that there is an obligation from mm -hmm. the Pakistan uh, part to respect, protect, and uh, observe human rights, basic human rights of Afghans. No, I'm, I'm asking this question. Sorry to cut you short. We, uh, as before the program, we were talking about that these uh, migrants came into Pakistan as refugees, but now since the nomenclature has changed, and we want to have a more conclusive or inclusive term that is the migrants. So these rights may be related to the refugees, may not to be the migrants, particularly those who are not registered or the, those who are not living legally inside Pakistan? <coughs> well, you see, that's uh, uh, what caused the refugees to come and mm. cross the border. Yeah. It was war. Yeah. And we still have that war is uh, continuing in mm -hmm. Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. So when the cause is there, so we don't have a conducive uh, you know, environment for a sustainable return and res resettlement of refugees back into country. Mm -hmm. So they still continue to entitle that refugee status here in Pakistan, despite the fact that some of them are a big number of them could uh, have found a, a settlement and, you know, um, and, and that, that's, that's also a fact. Mm. Uh, s but still, they, uh, whether they are registered or unregistered, undocumented, yeah. they entitled from the international law perspective and the human rights perspective, mm -hmm. they entitled to be, uh, you know, enjoying their rights and mm. their freedom and dignity, which is very important here. And they should be uh, put under the uh, support of the uh, uh, law and, uh, you know, obligation of the Pakistanis. Okay, let me just go to Kodak Sir, these, these are two narratives now here. One narrative is that, that Afghanistan has got their own political dispensation, they have their own government, particularly after the, the Taliban rule in the 1996 that ended with the uh, 2001 attacks and then the government came, then the Karzai government came, and then we have a kind of a peaceful transition from one president to the other president. This, this, this indicates a settled society which wants to grow in itself. On the other hand, this narrative uh, that this war is still going on in many parts of Afghanistan and people are not finding it uh, conducive to go back. What is Pakistan's perspective? What are we taking along in terms of these uh, migrants? Actually, uh, there has been a prolonged transition in Afghanistan mm -hmm. uh, from a uh, state of war mm -hmm. into state of peace, mm -hmm. into uh, a building a republic, mm -hmm elected by people, uh, building eco economy, building institutions. Mm -hmm. But of course, this transition is uh, complicated yeah. and difficult one. Mm -hmm. I think Pakistan, as a neighboring country, uh, would like to uh, support uh, Afghans uh, in this transition, mm -hmm. uh, in getting to a peaceful future. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, when, uh, Afghan refugees have lived here uh, for very, very long time. Yeah. If you uh, look back from 1980s, yeah. it has al almost been a four decades. Oh, the whole generation the has whole gone generation. by. But you see, there has not been any untoward incident. Mm -hmm. I mean, not that type of friction which is witnessed uh, in other places in the world, mm -hmm. where they, you have such big number of uh, refugees mm -hmm. or immigrants mm -hmm. living for such a long time. Mm -hmm. So basically, our people to people our relationship is very good. Mm -hmm. in spite of differences at times <coughs> that crop up between the garments. But there have been some allocations of some involvement, as he was referring to, to some kind of security issues that may be, may be risen by these migrants are here, and they have been apprehended by the Pakistani authorities. You see, uh, unfortunately, it is very common among uh, security forces all over the world, every country, <laughs> yes. that when they can't resolve <laughs> an issue, then they blame it. Mm. because. I, I uh, as a human rights activist, I've been dealing with this refugee problem for quite some time. Mm -hmm. 
they can issue, I mean, there may be criminal individuals among Afghans, yeah. like the, there are criminal individuals yeah. among Pakistanis. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Every, uh, yeah. But as community, yeah. Uh, they have behaved because because, because they, they know that they have taken shelter here. Look, they have most of them have become Pakistanis. Yes, they have got their Nadra yeah, cards yeah, and the yeah, passports. Yeah, of course. So so why would they really disturb their own life by yeah. indulging into some mm -hmm. So I, I think by and large there has been but of course of course, there, there has to be a solution to this. I mean, it can't really go on and on and on. There has no, to this, be. This, this is the very point that you are saying that uh, since uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan may not be having that enviable relationship that we could have. But don't you think that with this prolonged uh, migrant crisis that is going on, people have got this compassion fatigue? You see, in the last two days we have been discussing this issue. First of all, there are some challenges. For example, there, there is uh, a, a sort of uh, a legal vacuum. Hmm. You see, uh, although Pakistan has observed certain international laws, customary laws, mm -hmm. but Pakistan is not signatory, signatory to yeah. uh, Geneva Convention 1951 yeah. or 1967 protocol. Oh, yes. Okay. Similarly, uh, we do not have any law for refugees mm -hmm. dealing with refugees. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in the uh, refugees become vulnerable mm. be because then it's political expediency, mm. administrative decisions mm. uh, de dealing with refugees. No, no, I'm, I'm asking about the people of Pakistan. People you of Pakistan, go around no, no. People in the of streets, Pakistan, I, I, how do they treat you? You see, people of Pakistan, I don't think they really have run out of compassion mm -hmm. because had that uh, been the case, mm. we would have seen riots, we would have seen clashes. Yeah. Yeah. Which is not there, but we have we have our own we IDPs, our, IDPs yeah, for example. Yeah. We have our own, our own set of internally problems. displaced persons, yeah. uh, and, and there are pressures on urban centers, particularly. Yeah. But I, but I think refugees are displaced persons; they are victims. Mm. They are not perpetrators. Mm. So they should be treated uh, according to law, according uh, to humanitarian compassion, mm. and also. In, in, term, in view of long-term relation between the two countries. Okay, you, you pointed out long-term relationship. Heather, is, is it not the point that this, um, this, this, this people of, or a group of migrants, it's a big number, we, we all understand that. Can they become the bridge between the two countries because they, they may be traveling to the both countries and as you said, half of them may not be registered and they may be frequent travelers from both sides of Pakistan and Afghanistan. And they, they can be the, the, the conduit to place that bridge between the two countries to, to bridge that mistrust. How do you see that? Definitely, fantastically, you 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 pointed out that very, uh, very. Um, um, I mean, clearly. Mm -hmm. Let me say, put that word. Um, first of all, um, the Afghan people, as I just mentioned, are uh, really appreciative of what the Pakistani nation uh, reacted towards them when they were migrants and refugees um, back in the mm -hmm. years of war, and now, um, as you highlighted rightfully that the, uh, the dynamics have changed and we also in plus numbers uh, but plus uh, the refugees we have uh, migrants uh, uh, who also have um, economic contributions to the pa economy of Pakistan and also we have um, uh, in our everyday basis uh, travelers from uh, Afghanistan who do the medications here yeah. they are here for medical yeah. uh, treatments uh, of course these people can be ambassadors of, uh, uh, of goodwill among the two nations um, so this needs to be managed. Mm -hmm. First of all, the concerns that have been here and over the past uh, two days, today and yesterday, uh, security had been one of the main and core issues among the discussions. And then they were trying to trigger in uh, the, through the migration mm -hmm. phenomena and, and trying to link it up with how best can this be plugged in uh, towards a sustainable security uh, in both countries, mm -hmm. uh, which requires, of course, a political intervention, a political will t from the two governments mm -hmm. to kind of narrow down these gaps and yep. then reach to a consensus. Um, so definitely, first of all, uh, the first thing would be uh, to register the, the, mm, uh, the undocumented Afghans. Mm -hmm. um, as far as I understand, the Afghan government has a determination uh, to send hundreds of civil servants experienced and trained to come to Pakistan and in partnership with the Pakistani authorities and the Pakistani stakeholders mm -hmm. to uh, conduct this registration where then we are able to verify who is who. Okay. Um, and then, um, of course, plans can be laid out in terms of 
um, uh, providing them assistance mm. uh, towards the sustainable reintegration into Afghanistan. Okay, that's a, that's a long-term um, uh, process. I hope you, you can go along with it. But I have been witness to some of the Afghan media, and when last time when your delegation was there, and uh, uh, they were participating in some of the Afghan media programs, the media was very hostile towards the Pakistan delegates. Let, let me say that. Uh, is it the case that since in Pakistan this compassion fatigue, I, as I can say, it's, it's, it's a bit mitigating? Or on the Afghan side, this young and exuberant media might not have seen the days of the 1980s and they might have read them in the history books and this youthful population is more understanding the dynamics that are being changed and they, they, are, they may not be that much cognizant as you are saying that they are appreciative of the Pakistani efforts. Your take on this? Um, yeah, uh, I mean, um, uh, people do remember those days, and I would say um, a lot of the journalists and the media community in Afghanistan does uh, realize and appreciate those days mm -hmm. that assistance were extended. Mm -hmm. uh, but the fact Still is being extended. Uh, exactly, <laughs> extended and being extended. Yeah. So the thing is that, uh, uh, I mean, uh, people are watching us. Yeah. People are watching the two countries mm -hmm. and the trends uh, and the dynamics that, are, uh, that have developed over times. Yeah. Uh, security is, is the fundamental concern. factor that really triggers uh, the forestrations. Mm. Uh, so security is the main concern and, uh, and, and, and people's perception mm. uh, is really impacted. Mm -hmm. So we, that's why I said it needs a political intervention from the both uh, uh, sides, from the both governments to come together mm. and uh, reach to a consensus where both sides would have to lobby and uh, within the communities, you okay. can even educate people mm -hmm. and, um, and, and reaffirm mm -hmm. and try to recall those days as well mm -hmm. uh, and then get to a... Yeah, that's a very agreement. important point that uh, you, you, you make, uh, you remain cognizant of what has happened. Uh, Mahmoud, if, if you look at this development and the international organizations that are working there, you can easily discern that they are not that much interested in the affairs of Pakistan, Afghan uh, uh, migrants are concerned. They have other uh, access to grind here and there. This, the, the crisis has expanded here and there. But how can they be still reminded? Isn't it a good idea to, to, to once again relive those moments between the exchanges of the academia, of the students, or, or the youths, to live together and ha see how, do, how did we go along in the past 40 years? I think uh, part of the sol solution is the continuous dialogue between you know, civil society, academia, and mm -hmm. journalists, and those people who contribute mm -hmm. you know, to goodwill in the 21st century mm -hmm. and the, you know the the time that we are connected through facebook youtube yeah. you know internet and so many things and we can have our forums and discuss these issues and openly mm -hmm. and uh, anything happens in afghanistan or pakistan could be you know immediately mm -hmm. uh, r uh, broadcasted in washington yeah. or in brussels or yeah. somewhere so these discussions would be very positive in solving many of the problems that we have currently yeah. including the issue of refugees and mig uh, migrants that are uh, here but we should also be very uh, cautious that at the moment uh, because of so many uh, awareness so much information that are there things that could not be hidden anywhere anything mm. happens yeah. It could, you know, spark a kind of reactions that m could lead uh, to uh, misperceptions mm -hmm. or misunderstanding that of what was behind these issues. It's mm -hmm. not about Pakistan. We have similar problems with Iranians and other host nations who are hosting Afghans, like, you know, um, a person from Afghanistan are killed or, you know, harassed there, then it could immediately, you know, reflect on Afghan uh -huh. media or somewhere else. Anything happens in, in here, like, yeah. you know, incidents after the tragic attack in Peshawar, that yeah. was, uh, you know, uh, reflected a lot in Afghanistan and there was a lot of, you know, uh, uh, sentiment among Afghans that, you know, why refugees must be, you know, harassed after anything yeah. happens yeah. there. Uh, so these kind of issues are there and we should be aware that both these opportunities that are there, they should be seized and they should be developed and we could work together for solving these issues. And I think refugees, one of the positive factors that could contribute to betterment of relations between Afghanistan and Pakistan mm -hmm. in many ways, because it's in economic ways, in social ways, mm -hmm. in understanding of each other's cultures, you know, tradition, uh, many Afghans who lived here now, you know, 
perfectly and fluently speaking Urdu and <laughs> other local languages. Yeah. So these are actually a very good, uh, uh, you know, progress that we yeah. see in, in this region. And that could, uh, you know, help us to go along with each other forward looking and, uh, you know, uh, capitalizing these opportunities and, you know, investing for mm -hmm. better economy, for prosperous mm -hmm. a region that, you know, linking an Afghanistan that is, you know, could contribute economically like we, we talked a lot about, you know, electricity that's coming yeah. through Afghanistan to yeah. Pakistan. Now, you know, we are living the in the capital project, of the Kasa project, yeah. uh, Pakistan and mm -hmm. there are, you know, every two, three hours there are shift of, you know, electricity yeah. from uh, is going public, uh, you know, uh, electricity line to, you know, generator. So Afghanistan could be, a, uh, could transmit a lot of electricity from uh, Central Asia. Mm -hmm. The same is that uh, we could open up, you know, uh, or markets of uh, Central Asia through Afghanistan and so many other projects that energy uh, could mm -hmm. be uh, uh, brought uh, brought to Pakistan through Tapi line. Mm -hmm. These are opportunities we could seize, and this, of course, you know, this is uh, also a role for academia, civil society, human rights activists to engage in talk and discussions. Yeah. Probably politicians may not say everything yeah. that are, yeah. you know, in the interest of these two nations <laughs> because they are keeping something Some for of the themselves. Some egos but, may, may come in. But we could be is also a politician. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we see uh, Khatak Sahib more of a human rights human activist. Human rights activist. Uh, <laughs> okay, Khatak uh, if, if we look at the Pakistani migrants across the globe, we have a huge Pakistani diaspora yes. in, in, in Northern America, in, uh, in Western Europe, and even the Middle East. Whenever they come back from these countries, I have myself uh, studied in uh, one of the Western countries. Whenever we come back from, uh, from those countries, we usually, we usually talk positively about them. We say that, uh, that they have been uh, uh, gracious enough to, to give us this all thing, scholarships and all that. Why is it the case that we are not able to send this positive message from the Afghan migrants back to Kabul? You see, uh, as you earlier pointed out, the early generation of Afghans yeah. who lived here in peace and went back, mm. they have those positive feelings. Mm -hmm. Negative feelings have been generated by the continuing conflict, unfortunately, mm -hmm. which is still going on. Mm -hmm. The type of uh, suicide attacks that targeted Kabul recently, mm -hmm. like we had, we have our own experience on yeah, this side. This recently in Lahore. Y yes, in Lahore, yeah. in Peshawar, in Charsada. You see, these are things that really create uh, uh, misperceptions mm -hmm. uh, and at times hostile feelings. Mm -hmm. I think the, 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 the potential that we have, both mm -hmm. countries, mm -hmm. I don't know of any other two countries where people have met each other on such a large scale. Yeah, yeah. So this, this can be built upon. Secondly, both are facing terrorism. Mm -hmm. And actually, uh, we, when we talk of uh, winning hearts and minds, mm -hmm. uh, it starts with uh, IDPs are refugees. Yeah. They are the ones who have to be convinced yeah. about uh, the state policies, oh. <coughs> that the state policies are really for geared towards security. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think both Pakistan and Afghanistan needs to work together to win hearts and minds of refugees and IDP. And um, just, just in a passing way, I may refer to when yeah. we had this uh, Operation Zarbe Azb in our North Waziristan mm -hmm. in 2014, mm -hmm. uh, about 100,000 people from North Waziristan went yeah. into Afghanistan yeah. in Host province. Okay. Yes. And they were looked after the way we, we, we have been mm -hmm. looking after people mm -hmm. on this side. So I think... Do these people recognize this Duran line? Uh, you see, they, they recognize states. Okay. Both they states. They don't know where it is that line. Yeah, yeah, of course. An imaginary because, line. Because, because in, in certain areas it's not really demarcated. Yeah. But, but uh, and, and there are uh, one tribe living on both sides of the border, yeah. similar yeah. tribes. So they okay. have kept their tribal uh, affinities and... but but. Uh, they, they do uh, respect countries and the sovereignty, uh, etc. May I just add here, one of, the, one of the parts of the problem is that both our, our countries look at each other through the prism of a third country, that is India. Can we come out of it? Uh, That's a very important question. You see, as a student of Afghan history, and I have lived in Afghanistan for a long time, I can tell you that the communities that Pakistan and Afghanistan have, mm no other country can really compete with Pakistan mm. in having a friendly Afghanistan mm. as long as we have a sound policy, mm. a policy of befriending Afghanistan mm. as state, as nation. Mm. I always emphasize that we should have a benign policy towards Afghanistan.
Hmm. Like like China has towards Pakistan. Benign is a very loose term, by no, the way. But, yeah, but, but yeah. I'll explain it so, okay. so there's no misunderstanding. Okay. You see, Chinese do not interfere in Pakistan's yeah. internal affairs. Yeah. And you know that nobody in Pakistan is against Pakistan-China relationship. No way. No yeah. way. Yeah. Be because China Although there are some minor issues, yeah. yeah. But, but generally speaking, generally speaking yes. across the political spectrum, yeah. same can happen if we befriend a one state. I mean, but there is no policy. India between Pakistan and China, maybe. Well, uh, uh, China has very good bilateral relations with India. Uh -huh. Very, very large scale relations. And I think this is Chinese wisdom that we should also learn <laughs> yeah. that to, to have bilateral relations and multilateral relations are different. And you see, to me, I, I think Pakistan and Afghanistan are countries that can really uh, develop friendship and brotherhood mm -hmm. uh, like uh, no other two countries in the world can. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, we have got bogged down in this Cold mm -hmm. War thing. Yeah. Uh, we, we, have been, uh, we, we haven't been able to overcome this conflict. Mm -hmm. I think time has come. Yeah. And Pakistan has more responsibility yeah. as a bigger country to adopt uh, a more uh, flexible attitude mm -hmm. and uh, help Afghans mm -hmm. uh, in overcoming the problem mm -hmm. and particularly address the concerns expressed mm -hmm. by Afghans. Okay, uh, there's a sub, if, if, uh, giving you the same question of the Pakistan-India dynamics, as you might understand that what we are up to, we have fought wars and we have th these things going on and there have been some continuous negotiations going on on the, on the composite dialogue or the comprehensive dialogue with Pakistan and India and we have remained a hostage of this animosity. But, uh, and we have understanding, as Khatak Sahib has just pointed out, that Afghanistan should be looked at beyond the prism of India. I can understand, I can appreciate that there has been some, some gracious uh, investments by the Indians into Afghanistan in terms of infrastructure, in terms of medical, in, even the apartment building has been constructed by the Indians. But do, do you really think so that Pakistan-Afghanistan relationship should be beyond Indian prism? Uh, well, first of all, the, 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 the perception mm -hmm. uh, that is here that mm -hmm. Afghanistan, I mean, although it's a broader uh, political issue that needs to be looked at uh, in a broader sense, mm -hmm. But uh, for me, as a migration activist, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, given the fact that I'm an Afghan national and I, I do know what the per uh, perception of my people is, yeah. uh, if I can put it in very simple terms, mm -hmm. if, I, if I have a relationship with Mr. Khatak, mm -hmm. um, um, and um, I know him well, mm -hmm. we have had a relationship uh, for a long, long time, and we have got along uh, in, uh, over many issues, then I don't think I have to refer to you mm -hmm. to, to be able to know him. So um, yes, uh, Afghanistan as a sovereign state does have its own uh, uh, independence in, in, in maintaining relationships and cutting relationships uh, with certain states. Mm -hmm. But definitely uh, to, to build and, and, and actually fix these perceptions mm -hmm. here in Pakistan and for the Afghan nation in Afghanistan that all the relationships are based on the mutual respect okay. and mutual... Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry to cut you short, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. It's time for a very short break. When we come back, we'll continue our discussion in this program. Please stay with us. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We have been talking about the Pakistan-Afghan relations with the special focus on the Afghan migrants inside Pakistan. And when we were going to break, we were talking to Mr. Uh, Hader Zai. And let me continue with the discussion with Mr. Hader Zai. Hader Zai, sir, we were talking about that this the Indian perspective and the message that has been put across. Uh, since you are working with these migrants and you are working with international organizations as well, what is their uh, panacea? What's the, their solution for these problems? Well, the international com community, particularly international organizations, are trying to mm -hmm. uh, find a solution for this human humanitarian uh, a problem mm -hmm. um, at the specifics of the humanitarian crisis. Mm -hmm. um, all they can play is a an advisory role mm -hmm. to the both uh, to, to the both sides, like mm -hmm. both governments, mm -hmm. uh, and facilitate uh, the, the 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 platform where. Uh, both countries can get together yeah. and express their political will in order to 
uh, get them registered and then eventually in a longer term mm. uh, look into sustainable solutions to integrate them into the Afghan community. And uh, on the other side, uh, it's important that uh, we realize the fact that uh, migration issues, particularly having lived in Pakistan mm. uh, for more than 35 years, um, and I mean, we're talking about mass numbers, three millions. Yeah. I, mean, uh, have, I mean, getting them sent back to their home country uh, is not as easy as, as, we can, uh, as someone can um, simply say. Mm. So we need to look into their uh, integration aspects and there has to be an absorption capacity created within Afghanistan and the Afghan government is trying that. Uh, the good thing is that, uh, let me assure you that uh, the current government has a determination mm. to address migration issues quite seriously, okay. which will eventually um, you know, help uh, in, in many other uh, dimensions. Uh, at this stage, the, the, the Afghan government has established the Migration High Commission that is chaired by His Excellency the President of Afghanistan that meets every six months. And on the operational and technical level, mm. uh, there is a Council of Ministers sub-technical committee okay. where um, uh, all the sectarian ministry, ministries, ministers of the ministries are uh, members to it. And okay. it meets every three months. Mm -hmm. And then there is a, a third um, uh, uh, gathering that is chaired by um, His Excellency the Minister of Refugees and Repatriation in Afghanistan that is a coordination and more of a technical meeting with the international partners, with stakeholders from the international organizations where they, uh, they um, kind of discuss practicalities of the challenges and, and how to uh, provide solutions to that. So um, you know, having said that, there is a determined uh, political will from the uh, uh, Afghan side. Okay. Uh, so all we need but to there do... But are, there are grand realities that we need to cater for. But there's another aspect I want to go to Mr. Mahmoudi. Uh, when the security situation is uh, not improving to our own liking, when the Afghan Taliban are dragging their feet from the talks and they are not coming onto the table and people are saying that they are getting more confident, more buoyant uh, after the recent uh, successes in the northern parts of Afghanistan, how do you see this is practicable to talk about the return of the refugees when the security situation is not improving? Well, you see that uh uh, the government of Afghanistan is trying its best. We have a state now that's responsible, constitution and the government that is, you know, succeeding uh, in many fronts, including fighting uh, uh, Taliban and terrorists who are crossing the lines every day and, you know, harassing Afghan people and committing crimes. Uh, 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 these efforts uh, need a little bit time because uh, the, as our colleague mentioned, there are policy in place, there are determination, there is a political will, and there is a practical work is going on. There are 28 townships are, you know, under construction for refugees to return back to Afghanistan from both Iran and Pakistan. And where are these townships <coughs> being constructed? In 28 exactly. provinces of okay. Afghanistan. So they are allocated. Spreading all over yes, Afghanistan? Uh, or all over Afghanistan, okay. all of the cities, because we have refugees who cross the lines to Pakistan and uh, on, uh, uh, from all over the Afghanistan, you know, from the and north. What's the timeline for those, for those units? Uh, are these well, hamlets or? These are, these are the, the, the focus of the government of Afghanistan. However, there is, you know, a need for uh, understanding that the, the, the real difficulties that uh, the capacity for absorption uh, is not there fully because of you know s so much problems that Afghanistan after the war you know has uh, and that that is that brings us to this reality that you know uh, return and repatriation of refugees must be gradual voluntarily and with assessments of the situation because it is in no capacity of any countries that you know observe overnight the uh, you know a mass numbers that we are talking about these issues so but the, there might be you know uh, uh, no possibilities that over time you know with giving with help of the our neighboring countries especially okay. Pakistan to right. end war in Afghanistan you know and to contain those people that are crossing the lines and, uh, you know, coming to it's Afghanistan going on, harassing. It's going on, going on. Uh, but except so just this last this thought this on this. So, uh, sorry, Nikoshi, this short, I have to uh, yes. conclude my program. Uh, but uh, Khatakseb, if you look at the security situation and the talks that we are having, and there are some developments and the construction units are being built, but the people of Pakistan or the Pakistani authorities are also looking at this thing that the Afghan Taliban are on the rise as far as the recent uh, developments are concerned. So how much hopeful we are uh, in the near future that they are going to return? 
I think the rise of Taliban should be as bad for Pakistan as it is yeah. for Afghanistan because yeah. their ascendancy in Afghanistan will ultimately re, uh, help uh, Taliban's here on, the, on our side of the border. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I, I think uh, uh, the way uh, ultimately we have been able to uh, handle this problem in our uh, borders, mm -hmm. we hope uh, with the help of the international community and with the help of neighboring countries, particularly Pakistan. Well, I'm not saying it's good or bad, but I'm saying that looking at the ground reality, you that see, the security situation may be worsening? It may be, but I can tell you, I mean, I, I, I really strongly believe mm. that uh, Taliban have no future, mm. political future. Mm -hmm. I think they are, they, they, they are not a force that can rule uh, a country in 21st century. Mm -hmm. I think uh, they are opposed from the yeah. past. So I think Afghans will ultimately be able to uh, establish uh, peace. And uh, as you know, I mean, uh, in, in this week, there has been an agreement signed in Kabul between the Afghan government and uh, Gulbuddin Hikmatyar, yeah. uh, who fought uh, the, the government for a very, very long time mm -hmm. and ultimately mm -hmm. has come around to. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, such elements who are reconcilable yeah. will come to peace. Okay. And those who will not be reconcilable, mm -hmm. those who will insist on mm -hmm. fighting, mm -hmm. I think ultimately all the regional states will have to fight them together mm. because those who want to continue war mm. are not just enemies of one country. I think yeah. they uh, will be enemies of all countries. Okay, Heather, is that your last thoughts on, on our whole process that we are going on? Well, uh, basically, I would reflect, uh, ref reflect more on the migration uh, perspective. Okay. Um, so uh, the basic uh, 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 thing here is that uh, the remaining uh, uh, Afghans who, who, who do not hold any legal documents they have to be verified and a due process for registering them have to be okay. uh, uh, initiated yeah. uh, where the afghan government and the international partners like the international organization for migration mm. uh, has really uh, done a lot and put a lot of efforts to kind of uh, bring technicalities together in order to make this happen uh, so it's just a matter of political will and, um, and our represent I mean, the International Organization for Migration representation here mm -hmm. in, in Pakistan is also lobbying with the government of Pakistan mm -hmm. uh, to kind of advocate for the initiation of this process. And also um, uh, the other uh, portion of uh, migrants who are refugees um, uh, holding POR cards, uh, maybe, um, I mean, sending them overnight to Afghanistan would not be a solution. So uh, definitely the extension of their POR cards would really okay. help a lot. And eventually uh, adhering to the uh, basic human rights of migrants. Okay. And adhering I'm, to just, I'm just going to close my show. Mahmoudisa, you, your last thoughts on this, that I what could be the, the near future? I think refugees are still remaining vulnerable here. Yeah. Um, they should be uh, protected and uh, their human rights uh, and dignity must be uh, observed and respected. And that includes that they give, you know, uh, the uh, protection that the government uh, of, of Pakistan uh, is needed, including the registration that our colleagues yeah. refer to that, and including that, uh, uh, you know, uh, looking at, uh, into their status here as a refugee that because of uh, o eventually they are going to uh, you know return to Afghanistan and we are hoping that the sometimes we have it have them in Afghanistan uh, but at this at the time that is difficult and they are remaining here their human rights must be protected right. and they have the due process and right. be immune from the arbitrary you know harassment okay, that's taking okay. place. Thank you very much Saab, and thank you very much Heather Zai Saab and Mahmoudi Saab for sharing your very valuable thoughts and giving us your precious time. Ladies and gentlemen, we always welcome our Afghan friends in Pakistan and we always want that uh, the, the peace in Afghanistan that has to be there, that has to be sustainable and that has to be contribution also towards the peace of Pakistan and the prosperity of Pakistan. The Afghan migrants or the Afghan refugees who have been here in Pakistan for such a long time, they have gelled into the Pakistani society, most of them, but still, if there is anything that we should always hope for, because nobody wants to leave their own homeland, they always want to return to their homeland if the situation is conducive. So both parties should be working together in, uh, in going ahead and, and trying, to some, uh, trying to find some way out of the situation and send these brothers and sisters to, uh, to their own homeland, to, their, to the, where their people are, where their ancestors' graves are, and where their beloved are all residing there. But all the time, Pakistan will always remain there, standing by the side of their Afghan brothers and sisters. Your comments and suggestions are more than welcome at facebook.com forward slash Dr. Zubair Ghori official, and my Twitter handle is Dr. Zubair Ghori. That's all from us tonight. Have a very good night. Allah Hafiz.